You're listening to the audio portion of Workshop Wednesdays. Workshop Wednesdays is a free live discussion about topics affecting accountants, bookkeepers, and business owners. You can join the AVO group in Facebook to participate live Wednesdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Just search for ABBO in Facebook. This podcast is brought to you by SchoolofBookkeeping.com, where you will learn, grow, and build a thriving bookkeeping practice. We have hundreds of lessons with almost every aspect of the industry. Start your free month today at SchoolofBookkeeping.com. Welcome to oh. another Workshop Wednesday. It is September already. Wednesday, <laughs> September. What's the year? Ew, let's not talk about that. <laughs> All right. I saw something uh, the other day. It was like, uh, man, I can't believe it's September already. It seems like it was just March, like 17 years ago. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> the time is just standing still and going so fast at the same time. I think that we've come a long way since March. I feel better. Don't you? I do. I do. Well, welcome again uh, for another Workshop Wednesday. Today's workshop is all about handling consignments. So, uh, Carrie, let's talk about what, what a consignment actually is. What 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 so, is it? <laughs> so oftentimes when a, let's just say you have a retail shop and there's a new product that somebody's trying to get you to sell and you're not sold on it yet. So they say, well, why don't you see how it'll sell before you have to stock up on it? So you don't own that inventory. You just agree to try to sell it. So that creates a dilemma because you haven't, you have nothing to add to your books. And so someone's the ready advantage, to buy. The advantage is, is that to a business owner, you don't have to buy the inventory. You have right. something to sell, but you don't have to buy it ahead of time. <clears throat> so right. in that regard, it's, it's, uh, it helps your cash flow uh, as a business owner because you don't have that money tied up <clears throat> until it's sold. So it's a, it's a pretty good return on your investment when it comes to you know, deciding the way to do that. And, and high ticket items like cars and furniture, uh, pretty good idea. I mean, it's pretty cool to do it that way if you have that, that kind of arrangement. And we had a used car and, uh, you know, there was a consignment car dealer. So I took it down there and they had it on their lot. So, you know, it, it's better than me doing a private sale uh, because, you know, I have to, I have to figure out, you know, do I post it on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace or, or something like that? He's got a car lot with, you know, people coming to the car lot. So it's it's a better win for me as a seller and a better win for them as 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 a business because they didn't have to buy it off me in order to sell it. So, um, but yeah, like you said, that does bring up some dilemmas. How do you track that? Yeah. <laughs> right. right. So that's what we yeah. wanted to talk about today and, and the different ways to, to kind of handle that. Uh, so one thing, uh, you know, that you, you want to ask yourself, right, is, is do you want to carry this in stock, right? Because then it would make it an inventory item and then you have a, all, all to deal with that. But we're, just, we're going to talk about in general just to, how to account for that, right, Carrie? Right. Yeah. Cause there's the, like he was saying, there's two ways you can do it. You can track it as your inventory, which causes dilemma at the year. You know, if you want to do that at year end, then you have to figure out how to get it off your inventory because you didn't pay for it. You got these open bills and you got to deal with that. So that's one way you can do consignment. We're going to talk about how to do it. It's a little less information than you would get as running it as your inventory, but it does the same similar job. It's good enough, right? You don't want to load up with too much data. So, right. Okay. And, and if that's something that your business uh, or your client's business handles on a regular basis, then it kind of leads to those, those kind of decisions and those questions when you, when you talk, when you're working with them, you know, do you, uh, do you want to handle this as inventory? If we do, then we have this this option. So, Carrie, you want to share your yes. screen, and we'll kind of walk through uh, this this kind of procedure. And I am going to put in the I can see my screen. comments. I can see it. Good. He Remember? never. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't want the wrong screen open. <laughs> okay. Exactly. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right. So, so you're going to show the through. you're going to show the desktop, uh, and I'm going to show the the uh, the QuickBooks Online uh, way to way to kind of handle this. Now, yes. um, what we're what we're what we're doing here is we're going to handle this with accounts and classes. Uh, so um, so first we need to set up a class, and we're going to set up a class for each individual consignor, and that would be the person. You know, person that's come that that is coming in uh, to to call. say, hey, I've got a car or furniture or um, whatever it is that I'm going to um, consign uh, for for you, and, and uh, so we'll set them up as a class first. So you did that there, and then we want to create two uh, two income or two expense uh, two accounts, one an income account and one an expense account, just to track the consignment income and the consignment expense separately. Okay. So one, yeah, so one income account and one uh, expense account. Not cost of goods, but just expense. No. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. I mean, you can, again, you can do that if you want the cost of goods sold if you, if you prefer to have it as a, so you have your gross profit there, right? Yeah. Which would you prefer? I would like cost of goods sold. Thank you. <laughs> cost of goods sold for a hundred, please. <laughs> Consignment, expense, payout, whatever. This is yeah. how. This is what you're going to write. This is the check that I'm going to write to Dan, my consigned yeah. person. When it's when it's sold. One's an or and one's an e. When it's sold, Dan will get. It'll go here. Okay, got it. So I've got so now my. We're gonna, we've we've set up an arrangement and we're like okay this is how much i want to be paid out when it sold when it sells and then you can sell it for whatever you want and then you just get to keep the difference so um so we're going to create a new item right. and and we can create this item as uh as as a generic item or we can create it as you know individual and that would be you know if you're really wanting to track the what you have on on hand um you know, if you if you're a retail store and you've you've got to actually create uh, a barcode for that particular item, um, you know that that sort of thing is going to determine whether you need it to be individualized or not. But we're just going to create a, a a generic item here, your Dan's car, and then okay. you want to mark I'm, that. I'm going to check this button to to give me two sides. Right. If I don't do that, it's going to get lost. Right. And so I'm going to say old car by Dan, whatever I want to show up on the invoice. And Dan and I have come to the agreement. Now, let's just say retail shops, clothing, you don't typically mark it up. So if you pay $50 for a pair of pants, you're going to sell them for 100 So, But Dan and I have a deal because I'm the one selling it for him. So I hope to make more money, right? Right. So right. he's going to give me a deal. He's only going to charge me four hundred for the thousand dollar car, and I'm going to use that new consignment expense. My preferred vendor is going to be. Oops, we didn't send it set it no, up. You didn't set me up as a as a vendor. Now but we can if we want. And right here. Right on the fly. <laughs> on the fly. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I'm going to sell it for a thousand dollars. Now I'm going to leave taxable because in the state of blah, 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 it would be taxable. <laughs> Why I'm adding it to the item code. So I don't have to, can you imagine if you don't have this set up and you're selling it and forgot about sales tax? So let's do right. this part right. And then consignment, not expense, because it's going to take you to a zero move. You want to mm -hmm. point to the right account. Right, your consignment Boom. income. Many C right. accounts. All right, so that's gives, now I'm ready to sell. Dan's right. car. Now to set it up ahead of time, because you know you you're gonna need to pay me, right? When when it's sold. So what we can do to kind of get ready, get that get that set up to be able to do that is create a purchase order for yeah. that consignment item. And the reason we want to do the um, we want to do a purchase order is right. because it's non-posting. Mm -hmm. We don't really have the expense until it's sold. The class, I'm going to carefully use Dan. Most Dan's everywhere. Um, <laughs> and then the item code, Dan's car. And when we sell it, it will then become a bill. So right, right. now we're getting it just, just going to sit in the hopper until we're right. ready. Bam. 
So now that's... So that way, that way you've got it set up an, ahead of time to be able to, you know, because once it's sold, then you have to go and actually, you know, pay, pay, pay the consigner. Right. So okay. setting and it up as... I wanted to see if this item's on a purchase order. Uh, I somehow I was trying to add that column. Somehow yeah. it just flew away. You tried okay. to get fancy. I got fancy on the fly. Never get fancy on a, in a live demo because that's when nothing works. Because right, it'll only show that. Uh, well, it'll only show that on a uh, on an inventory item. If we had said oh, that. there you go. That's what's wrong. Okay, it, it, he's good point. So yeah. once again, <laughs> note to self. <laughs> note to self. Um, if you call this a non-inventory part, that's the problem with that. So, you know, you could always, it's up to you. I like to call right. it inventory. But go on. <laughs> right. So now, now, hooray, it's sold. So you want to bring up the sale. Uh, so yes. we can either do that as an invoice or, or a sales receipt. It's depending on how, you know, how it's you bring up your sales, sales normally. Receipt. Yeah, I like invoice, but um, oh, customer. I can sell it to me. <laughs> no, I'm gonna sell it to my favorite customer, ABC Plumbing. Um, oops, I didn't mean to do Can't that. Sell it to that. Yep. All right, Dan's car, and I'm so excited. I sold it for a thousand dollars. Oh, what did I forget? The class. Got the class. And then you know what happens when you forget the class? There, you got to make sure it's on the on the line, if it needs to be. Yeah, that it's not doesn't on need that. to be. We're good. Okay. You know, if there's... But you that. because you set that item up ahead of time, it pulled the sales price, um, you know, the right sales price from... No, you don't have to go get a notebook and go, what did I say I'd sell it <laughs> What did for? I say I was going to... What, what was the arrangement? So by setting it up as an item first, you'll have that... Be able to ring that up a, a lot faster. Uh, so we want to save it. Okay. Save it. Um, I'll just pay cash because I can. I've got that yeah. much cash in my pocket. Oops. Always got to uncheck the old email later. <laughs> All right. Save. And now it's sold, now, but we have another. Step. Now I need to, now you need to pay me. So yeah. now we can turn that, uh, that purchase order into a bill. So we can receive, uh, you know, enter the bill as soon as you put me on the vendor. And it's going to say, gonna Hey, fine. you've got, You've got a purchase, open purchase order. Do you want to receive against that? Select it, and then it will just copy those items to the bill. Uh, put in your, you know, your, your, inf your reference number, cool. information like that. Don't forget the class. And the class is on the individual line, so we're good there. But it's always good to just cover your bases. Right. So there's the we'll bill. Save and close. Save and close. And then, you know, under normal circumstances, you would then, you know, pay the bill, write the check, however you're going to actually uh, pay that. But now when you go to profit and loss yep. and show those columns by class. Bam. Now we've got a, a, a setup. <clears throat> uh, we've got a column that is just the, uh, you know, the, the Dan column. <laughs> and then if you want to do this, you know, and customize this just for your consignments, what you can do is, is customize the report and filter for just those two accounts. Right. So it's up at the top, multiple accounts. And if you just search for consignment. If, if I can spell it. If you can spell it, then you can just check Oh, I can even off. It, select all. Yeah. All right. Click OK. Mm -hmm. So now we only have, we have our, our gross profit of uh, 400 or $600 because we had the bill set up and then we have the um, you know the invoice or sales receipt bringing up the the income so that way you can keep track of you know on one report you can memorize it uh, you can see Name what it. I just changed how those arrangements are working out um, if you have other uh, other consignors come to you and then you can take a look at that report and, and make some decisions like okay well this one was six hundred dollars how much work did I actually need to do that, do for that? Um, and then you can allocate other, you know, other ooh, expenses ooh, ooh. into that. That's my favorite button right there. Hit the percent <laughs> and it shows you your margin. There you go. I'm like, hey, Dan, you have any more cars? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or 
you know, on the fly, I had to change my agreement. You know, I had to change the sales price or I had to change maybe he, his agreement I put in the notes that he wants to have 30% of whatever I sell. So you put those notes in there. You don't, you're not stuck with the sales price and the expense, but it gives you a starting place. So that's, that's like a, uh, an easy way to kind of handle uh, handling consignments uh, just so that the accounting is correct. Um, there's a lot more questions than answers in, in, in this setup uh, to be able to, to, to do that. But uh, this will allow you to you know, create a report, see it in, in all in one, one place. Uh, so I'm going to kind of run through what I've done for uh, QuickBooks Online because uh, Carrie's shown the desktop. And so let me share you that. Can, and you can translate, while he's getting that pulled up, you can translate this workflow even in point of sale, QuickBooks point of sale. Yeah. Um, so, um, so I already went ahead and oh. uh, created the, the list. Uh, so what I did was I created a, a, a parent class and then started creating um, ah. each consignor as a subclass. Because uh, that way, if you're using classes for something else, in addition to tracking consignment, you can then filter your reports even for, further for just those those classes. Um, and then you kind of have them grouped together. Um, so it gives you a little bit more, more flexibility. Uh, so I used Bob, Bob and Jane <laughs> there. I, now, the challenge is that if you're using a plus, uh, you have a limitation on the number of classes and locations that you can use. So uh, if you're going to use classes in this, in this situation, you might hit that limit if you're, if you're using plus, cause you only have 40 combined between the locations and the class. So then you may need to upgrade to advanced if this is a, a deal breaker or, or you really like the way this is, this is working out with the, uh, uh, with the reporting. Right. So we've got and if you're, yeah. I was just going to say, and if you, if you haven't purchased yet, the best way to get those discounts is to make sure you're getting the right product to start with. So don't right. go into plus until you max out because you'll lose that discount. That's just my right. <laughs> side. So I already, I already created the item. It's a non inventory item. I just used a, a generic uh, consignment item. I chose the class on the item itself. So that way I'm sure that the uh, class is going to be assigned and then I can modify it to the individual consignor uh, during that time period. I would just leave, if it's a generic item, um, you know, I'm it's just gonna blank. leave the, uh, leave it blank. And then, um, but I have my consignment uh, income and my consignment expense. Now I set it up as, a, as an expense account versus a cost of goods sold. Uh, of course, uh, Carrie would oh, probably tell me to- <laughs> We have a cat spotting. Cat sighting. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> One. Yeah, we need to do a, a cat pool during the the workshop Wednesdays. When are they going to show up? <laughs> during How many? The, How many will right? show up? How many spots? Exactly. There's one so far. <laughs> exactly. All right. So we've got our uh, our income and expense account set up on the item. Uh, we would do exactly the same thing. Uh, we would create a purchase order uh, for that. I don't know if I did that already. I think have, it, yeah, um, I did. Yeah, so I did create the. You have to have at least, the, at least. Sorry to interrupt. You have to have at least the addition of plus to be able to do inventory and purchase orders. At least inventory. Yes. Okay. And and also classes. So. And classes. Um, all so. three of these things at least put you into into plus. Into plus. Um, right. Uh, so I have my generic item uh, put in the amount and then you just have to modify the class uh, to be sure that it, if you're using the subclass situation. All right, okay. uh, so that's that. And then we sell it. So we got a new sales receipt. What do we have here? The bird sanctuary, we bought my consignment item. And then I'm gonna put the, um, you know, the sales price of that. So let's say it's $500 um, and then change the consignment to Bob so that I keep the class uh, in order. Okay. And then save and close. And then from my reports, I have, my, oh, I forgot to uh, do the bill. You're right. Oh. Okay, so. 
good catch. <laughs> uh, but again, that, that, that consigner will be set up as a vendor. Uh, this is going to allow me just to add the, the purchase order to it. And we do have the class. The, so the class pulls over from the transaction. And then we save and close that. And then my profit and loss by class. There's my Bob consigner. Uh, I can then customize this to only show. Consignment income and expense accounts. And there we go. Same, uh, same, same thing. And then we can save that customization uh, for my consignment. And save it. So the next time it'll be in my my customized uh, reports. Uh, so that's how you would handle that same situation in uh, in QuickBooks Online. Uh, we've shown that you how to do that in uh, desktop as well, and we've got the blog article in the comments here uh, so that you can review that uh, procedure uh, as you need. And this can be done in any version of desktop. QBO plus and advanced and point of sale pro and multi-store, not basic. So not simple start, not essentials, not point of sale basic, but the other, all the other ones you can do this with. Okay. So, um, so next week uh, we're actually going to be doing um, bounced checks. <laughs> <laughs> so many cats when... bounce by. Right. We'll see how many cat, cats bounce by. So we'll see you next week. Um, thanks for joining us again today and uh, hope you have a great day. Bye. Have a good week. Mm -hmm.